Calipers for woodworking? Oh yeah, we got a review next. I'm Rick, and this... Shut the heck up, you stinking boosters. This is the shack. Hey everybody, welcome. New to the channel, first time stopping by. Thank you so much for taking some of that valuable time out to view. I truly appreciate that. Always ask that you would consider subscribing. If you do, ring the bell so you're notified when the videos do come out. Woodworking calibers, yeah. Definitely a place in the shop now. This was the only caliper I have ever used in the last 40 years. The reason why I even considered updating is this dial is basically rides on this, this little rail right here. If I slide this open too quick, it will jump those teeth in there and it will be off. So when I measure and when I close it back up, instead of being true zero, it's off 10 to almost 50 thousandths. So I have to re-zero it go back and do it again. But just going back a little bit, it can jump. So it's just telling me these teeth here are finally wearing down. So it is time. Now I did some research and I almost pulled the trigger on some $130 or $40 Metatoyo, I think they are, Metatoyo calipers. Really, really nice. Didn't want to spend that kind of money, so I was looking at some other brands. I think it's eye gauging. And I was like, I don't know, still leaning towards the Metatoyo. And then I stumbled on the eye gauging fastener calipers and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This is cool. Check them out. Seen some reviews. Yeah, I like these. Went ahead and purchased them. These are them. They are fantastic. I've used them a little bit. Check them out. These slide extremely smooth compared to my gear driven styled calipers. These are just silk smooth, beautiful. And no matter where I'm at, if I turn it off, close it, turn them on, automatically goes zero. And I'll demonstrate that. So come on up close. We're going to go through these real quick. I think I have found my new favorite tool. This is the box that the eye gauging calipers come in. They are fastener calipers, four-way reading. On this side, you will see they read in inches and in decimals, millimeters inches and in fractions to the 128th of an inch, uh, inches in fractions to the 132nd of an inch. And the only downfall with these, and I'm sorry, made in China. But other than that, I am extremely impressed with these. This is a little carrying case that it comes in. Open that up, and this is everything that is included in these calipers. You have your instructions. You have a certificate calibrations. Now, I can't say that these are all been performed, every one of these little tasks, because the check marks are all the same. They look like they're printed on here. So take it for what you will, but I do know that right here, it is handwritten the uh, serial number, and the serial number is right here on the calipers. So that does match. Comes with two CR2032 batteries. One I have already installed. That's a nice added touch to give you too. Also comes with this cute little screwdriver. Wasn't sure what it was for, and I figured out because I can't get my fingernails in here. I think they were just being nice. They added this in. You use the screwdriver to pop open the door here to install the battery. That is everything that is included. Now out of the box, this thing feels like a good tool. It doesn't feel cheap at all. This thing glides like silk very, very smoothly. The body here is plastic. Everything else is metal, stainless steel, I believe. Ergonomics of this feels really good. You know, it doesn't feel cumbersome at all. I have like little serrations or something in here to grab onto so it doesn't slip. And you got them on the back to push it. And the wheel here for your fine tuning just glides. I mean, really glides smoothly. So let's turn this on and go through some of the modes. After you install the battery, you hit the green button, turns it on. Now this thing was dead nut, right on zero, out of the box. Have no complaints at all about this. 
Again, just glide smooth. You can slide it. And it goes right back to zero. Let's just bring it out here somewhere. Let's just put it about right there. So I'm at 1.316. Now, if I want to know the fraction equivalent or millimeter equivalent, I can actually cycle through this and it won't lose the measurement. So the center button here, that's your mode button. The next setting after the decimal mode, it is at 128, 128th of an inch. It measures in fractions. I'm at 5 16 here, so I'll bump it up a little bit. So if I was to measure something and I came up to this 141 and 128 of an inch, you're talking foreign. I have no idea what that is. I have no use for that function, 128th of an inch function. So I can cycle through to the 132nd of an inch. Now I'm at 5 16 I know where I'm at now. I understand that. 128th of an inch does me no good at all. So if I want to go, let's just say what the millimeter, right there, 33.51 millimeters. And just for your reference real quickly, the top part is in millimeters, the bottom part is a standard. But it's nice that I have that option. I can cycle, so, so I'm back at 1.319, 1, 141, 128th of an inch. Uh, again, I just don't know that. But it will go down to 64 of an inch. So that does help, but personally, I'm right there. I like the 32nd of an inch. I don't deal with the others. If I want to go get that precise at 128th of an inch, I'm going to go back to the decimals. That makes more sense than the other. And on the back here, it actually has a 164th of an inch scale broken down with the uh, decimal equivalent next to them. I can't even read it, it's too small anyway, but they have it. Personally, I, if they would have done away with the 128th of an inch fraction and just had the 64th of an inch, that, that would have been sufficient to me. I don't need that other, it's just a waste for me. It's just nice to know that you can cycle through if you don't know what 153, 128th of an inch is. Heck, I don't know, and <laughs> go to the 32nd. 13, 30 seconds. Okay, that makes a whole lot more sense to me. <laughs> now, let's just say, let's go back to an inch and a half. Let's say one and seven sixteenths. So if I'm doing decimals and I need that as a reference point, what I can do is push this button. That zeroes it. Now, I have a reference point regardless of what the task I'm doing. So if I go too small, that's going to be too loose. I need it a little bit tighter so I can kind of do whatever, I guess, for tolerances. I don't know what you would use it for, but on the other models, I think if you push that again, it automatically goes back to the measurement. This one won't. So what I would do if I'm in a situation like this, since I am on the decimal, close it. Now I can zero it. I'm back to true zero. And I'm good as gold. It goes back every single time. Nice. Another quick thing, if you noticed, which one do you think is easier to read? That's a no-brainer. This is so easy. I can read where it's at zero. I can read if it's on the 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. If it's in the middle of those two, I can kind of guess. Yeah, it's like 25, maybe 35, somewhere around there. But if it's 22, 23, 27, I have to get a magnifying glass. I cannot see the little lines in there anymore at all. Whereas, yeah, got no issue on this one. I'm going to open this slow. I'm going to put this drill bit in. I'm just going to do the shank here. I don't want to get the other end. I'm just going to see what they come at. I am at, and here we go. Oh my God, I can't read that. Looks like 1.9, either 2 or 3. I can't see the numbers there. So let's see what we get with this one. 1.92. That I can read. That I can read. <laughs> if I want to know what the fraction of that is, go to 128th. Can't read that one. 3 16 How easy is that? 
I'll get another one here just out of curiosity. I'm just going to go with this area, average thickness here. I am at three point, looks like zero, maybe eight, nine, somewhere around there. I know it's not quite 10. So let's see what this one is. Go back to decimal. Oh, look at that, 0 0.308. Okay, now if I want to know what the fraction of that is, 1 28th is 39 128th of an inch, which I have no idea what the hell that is. <laughs> Get rid of that. Oh, 5 16th. How cool, man. So I'm telling you, I love this caliper now. And the last one, I think this is 3 8 I forget how big this one was. So I'm going to go in here and get me a measurement. We are at 3.7, I don't know, 4 maybe, 3, 4, somewhere around there. So again, but I want to go back to decimals first. There we go. Look at that, 3.73, I moved a little bit. So if I want to know the fraction of that, it's 3 eighths. So it must be dead on 3 eighths because 128 didn't show up. Go to my 1 32nd of an inch at 3 eighths. I absolutely love this caliper, baby. Now if you walk away from this, set it down for five minutes, the tool will automatically shut off. My tip is, if you're going to let this sit more than a week, if you're only going to use this maybe a couple times a month, turn it off, take the battery out, put it in your, put it in the case, put the battery next to it, leave it there until you're ready to use it again. I do that with my Wixi depth gauge that I use to set the depth for my routers and stuff. I only use it every now and then. I don't leave the battery in it. So I take the battery out when I store it, when I go to use it, as I will this, I will grab it, use that little screwdriver, pop this open, put the battery in, use it, turn it off, open this up again, take the battery out, put it away and leave it. That way you don't have a chance of the battery dying prematurely and there won't be a chance of any corrosion or anything happening. You know, sometimes you get that white junk, maybe the battery exploded or something, it's getting junk all over. You can ruin this, that way it won't happen. It's just a precautionary measure, and it's good sense to store this while you're not using it. Take the battery out, plain and simple. Now, going through all my research, checking out reviews, and looking at all the posts and things, there's a couple of things people were talking about as far as other brands that were not up to par. Once you close them, there were, and I saw the reviews on them, there was actual play. They could squeeze this, that number would jump, they could take this part, push on it, that number would jump. They weren't solid right there. They weren't true zero because there was actual play. These, as you see, there's nothing. They're solid. Another thing that people were talking about is the uh, calibration as far as the jaws, I guess, right here. They got different measurements here in the middle and then the end. They, they weren't consistent. So what I'm going to do... <laughs> Make sure that's clean. I'm gonna put this piece of paper in right here all the way to the end. I'm gonna just close on it, not squeeze it. I'm just gonna close it till it stops. Tap it, make sure it stopped. We were at 0 0.0045. Now I'll go take it back in. I'll go halfway in. I'm just gonna get about right there. Tap it, make sure it's closed. 0 0.0045 again. I'll not go in here where it's cut away. I'll go to the face where I have more solid surface here. Just right there to the end. Tap on it, still good. 0 0.0045 still. But I'll try to be gentle. I don't want to squeeze it too hard. Right here at the end. Let me get it right there. Oh, I'll be darned. Oh, I moved it. I go right here to the end. And look at that, 0 0.0045 again. 
that tells me that piece of paper gets exact same measurement all the way down. That, for this price, completely blows me away. Roop, roop. Right back to zero. I have nothing more to say on it. You've seen the proof. For $35.59, I recommend these all day. Unbelievable. Going from these to these is so easy and it is a pleasure. What a fantastic little caliper. I am very, very impressed. Make sure you look in the description. I will have a link to these where I bought mine. I'm not sponsored. I'm just letting you know. If you don't have a set like this, $35.95 of what the cost was. And I am very impressed in the quality. Unbelievable. I, I yeah, I can go on. Like I said, another 10 minutes just talking about how much I like them. <laughs> so, but I'm not going to bore you with that. Get your own pair and you can sit there and just play with them all you want. That's going to be it with this video. Please remember to subscribe and when you do, ring the bell. Otherwise, you will not be notified when these videos come out. With that, thank you so much for watching. Be blessed. Take back your shack. Build it <laughs> for your sanity. Precision does not have to be pricey. We will see you next video.